Hey everyone, it's Haley, and today I'm going to be talking about my cry-worthy books. This video is really interesting for me to film because I don't really consider myself a huge crier. Like, it takes a lot for me to cry at a book. I just, I feel like with books, I can kind of distance myself from it because I can picture what's happening, but I can picture it as a little bit less, like, um, sad or brutal, whatever it is that makes me cry. I can picture it as a dumbed down version rather than watching a movie and, like, the movie is just right in front of me and I can't really, like, dumb that down for myself. So I'll cry at a movie or a TV show more than I will at a book, but like I said, I think that's just because I kind of, I make it less sad for myself. But I do have some books that have either made me tear up or they have made me full-blown sob. Most of them I've just teared up, but some of them have really just gotten me right in the feels. So I'm going to be talking about those books with you guys today, and if I have a review for any of them, I will link them down below as per usual, and let's just get into it. So the first book that I want to talk about today is Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Maas. Now this is the second book of the Throne of Glass series and this is kind of like a couple of others in here. I can't get too much into why it made me cry because it's a spoiler, but just a character died in this book that I am still so sad about and I would have loved to see this character progress with the story. I just think this character added so much to the story and they're leaving it just made me like so sad and the way that they left it was just oh my god. So this just oh I was so surprised by it and it just got me right in the feels. Next up I have two books by the same author and that is Between Shades of Grey and Salt to the Sea by Ruta Sepetis. I actually just read this one. I finished it the other day and I adored it. Um, Ruta Sepetis writes historical fiction and she writes it in a way that is so unflinchingly honest. She puts that brutality of that time, like it's World War II historical fiction. It's a terrible, terrible time. There are so many horrendous things that are happening and she places her characters at the forefront of that and she has them witness these things. So as a reader, you're witnessing them through these characters firsthand witness, witnessing it. And the way that they describe it is just so awful and so vivid. And I love that. Like, I love these books for that. But at the same time, they are so emotionally impactful. Like, I had such a hard time reviewing both of these books just because I felt so connected to the characters. And I was right there with them as they were witnessing all these brutalities. Um, this book focuses on the Lithuanian genocide. So the character is in a concentration camp and this one focuses on characters who are trying to escape and they are escaping through Germany um, at the tail end of World War II. So you can only imagine the things that these people are seeing and I think what really makes it impactful is one, her writing, it's so honest, and two, you know that these, like, this is just the tail, like, not the tail end of it, it's just the tip of the iceberg. There are so many things that happened in reality, like, that actually happened in history that you won't even read about, and this is just some of it, like, it's just glossing over it, even though it is very honest and it puts that brutality right at the forefront. At the same time, it is just, like, touching the top of the iceberg. It doesn't even get into all the things that people who actually lived in that time would have seen and it just it was so heartbreaking for me to read but I do love both of these books very dearly. Along that same line I have Codename Verity and Rose Under Fire by Elizabeth Wine. Both of these books just get me right in the feels every time I read them and I absolutely adore them. They are both World War II historical fictions once again. This one takes place in an all-women's concentration camp and this one follows a girl whose plane has crashed in Nazi-occupied France and she has been taken in for interrogation by the Gestapo. So these people are experiencing the most terrifying things and it's something you can't even begin to imagine but these authors are able to put it into words and they're able to give a voice to these people who like people lived similar lives to the characters in these books which is just mind-blowing to me because what they see is terrible but you know like that actually happened and I just find that historical fiction really strikes me because it is it's real like there were people who actually lived and they actually saw things that are similar to what is happening in these fiction books so the story isn't even entirely fiction it just it gets me, oh, it just makes me so sad, but I do really, really love these books. They're 
fabulously written and they are really eye-opening if you don't know much about um, World War II they are just very eye-opening now the last historical fiction on here I had to limit myself to only a few or else there would have been a ton on here but that is the book thief by Marcus Zusak this story is just so incredible so impactful it's the story of a little girl and it's told through the perspective of death and it's a little girl in the time of World War II so you can only imagine what this girl is experiencing and how she's trying to understand this like there are all these terrible things going on that she can't even begin to make sense of and I think the perspective of death was just so interesting because death becomes a character in the book and he becomes a character that you really feel for so I just adore this story I don't want to get too much into why it made me cry because spoilers and I think this is just a great book to go into knowing as little as possible if you just know that it's narrated by death and it's about World, World War II then you're good. Next up is A Monster Calls by Patrick Ness. This book is actually becoming a movie and it's about a little boy who his mother is very very sick and he doesn't really have the best lot in life but he becomes friends with this tree monster and it's the story of him and this monster and how this monster really helps him to overcome all he's going through. It's just a beautiful beautiful story. The illustrations are absolutely gorgeous and it's a heart-wrenching story and I just think the movie is going to be absolutely fabulous and I can cannot wait for it to come out. Next up is We Were Liars by E. Lockhart. This book made me sob and I like it was one of those books that as I was reading it I didn't really know how I felt towards it. You really don't know what's going on in this whole story and I can't say too much about it because it is best to go into it not knowing anything but it's just you're trying to figure out what's going on along with the main character and I didn't think I was as emotionally attached to all the characters and everything that was going on until I was done the book and I was reading it on a road trip and I just remember I started sobbing and I was like trying to hide it because like I didn't want anyone to be like why are you sobbing and I'd be like this book like what I was just trying to like stay cool but I was like sobbing like full-on like lip quivering like sobs and it just it got me and I have no clue why but I just found this book to be so emotional and just oh my god next up is second chance summer by Morgan Matson this book I I really did enjoy it I enjoyed it a lot it's one of my least favorite by Morgan Matson though um, and I love Morgan Matson so even saying it's my least favorite of hers is saying a lot about it but I just, I found that I knew what was coming, but I still was heartbroken by the end. It, like, I just knew it was going to happen, and it just still got me, and everything about this book was just so sad, but it was, it was really good, but it was so sad. Next up is The One by Kira Cass, and I never thought I would cry at a selection book because like these are like my guilty pleasure reads, like I read them strictly for the romance and that's all and I just love it, but this one just got me and like I was crying at like 3 in the morning reading this book and I was like why are you crying? I probably started crying because I was overtired from reading it, but at the same time like there was just things that happened that were like so emotional and I was like why you gotta do me? like that come on and the final book that made me cry is one that I'm sure a lot of you can agree with and that is Harry Potter and the Deathly Hallows by JK Rowling the final book of the Harry Potter series and there's so many things that happen in this book that make me cry but like no most notably a character dies and it is like my favorite character and it's something that I just can't handle and I can't talk about it but if you do want to know which character I'm talking about uh comment down below and then I'll put like spoiler alert and then put who it is but like I mean there's so many but like the one just got me and I'm still not over it just oh my god Oh, I actually want to reread this series soon, but I don't know. We'll see. So those are all of the books that have made me cry. Um, notable exceptions. Me Before You did not make me cry. The Fault in Our Stars I've read a million times. It didn't make me cry. I don't know. I must not be human. What else made other people cry that didn't make me cry? The Hunger Games didn't really make me cry. Like, there was a part where I was like a little bit emotional, but didn't really make me cry. I don't know. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Let me know if any of these books you have read them, if they made you cry, or what books make you cry. So yeah, we can just cry together. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!